some plans here. Um, yeah, I decided to throw in a limp. I don't think Queen Five is necessarily the best hand to do it with, but I know it's like it's around ten BB. Sometimes I think it's kind of good to throw in a a limp with a hand that you wouldn't want to min raise call or be able to go all in with. Just see how he reacts. Um, he's been pretty aggressive so far, so if he does go all in or raise, then you can kind of get away from it cheaply. Once he min raises. Uh, it's, I mean, it's five hands in. I mean, I hate this, but we, you know, I know it looks strong, but it's five hands in. You can't just assume every time someone min raises your limp out of position, they have aces or kings. Um, I'm getting, you know, I need to have the best. Uh, I need to have like 25% equity to call, and uh, any queen, any five, I can get it in. And you know, occasionally I'll flop like the queen high flush draw or something, and get it in. Uh, or like a straight draw. Um, so it's not the best situation. I'm not that happy with it. And it could even be a fold. But I thought with reads, uh, without reads, it's probably better just to call and see what happens and get it in if I ever flop a piece of it. Once he min bets, it's kind of gross. But I just really can't see him doing this with the hand that I beat at all. Like, why would he do this with anything uh, that doesn't have showdown value? I mean, if he has ace high or king queen or something, he's not folding on this board for you know a pot size bet because me raising just doesn't really rep a seven. So I'm saying I have a jack or some draw or a complete whiff hand like I do. So I think it's kind of annoying and there's definitely an argument for folding against his raise, but uh, I'd decide just to let it go here. Uh, on the turn on uh, the hand on the right definitely could lead the turn um, yeah I think I prefer leading I think leading's a better play um, just because he's c betting a lot and he's raising a decent amount when someone checks back there it's such a wet board that I think they're going to be checking back yeah he has some 9s and some 5s that he'll check back but also I think that he's going to check back a lot of the hands that didn't connect with that board. I think if he has king 8 offsuit, he's probably not c betting there. Um, and if he does have a 9 or a 5 and call when I lead the turn, uh, I can put pressure on a lot of rivers. Like I can rep the flush when that comes through. I can have an 8, I can hit a king. Uh, I'd like to hit a top pair, which will be Good the vast majority of the time so yeah um, I think leading here is good I like quite a big size just to put pressure on him 60 then the pot's 200 and then I think you bet 150 on a lot of rivers and uh, take down as is I checked he checked back um, once we get to the river like this I think he's probably got some kind of showdown value just because once I checked the turn I'd imagine he would bluff if he didn't have anything like if he had a 7 or an 8 or like like if he had 7 2 he should be betting this turn um, and also like yeah I, I just don't think he's ever really uh, bluffing the river and I've got a straight so I've almost always got the best hand so that said I think I have to value bet I don't want to make it too big because I don't want to scare him off. He's gonna like his whole range is gonna be a hero call basically. Uh, so I think if I bet half pot, I should be able to get a call here. Even though if you look at it from my defending from the big blind range, what is it that I could be turning into a bluff here? Like why would I? If I had a pair of sixes, am I gonna turn it into a bluff? No, I don't think so. Like even a pair of sixes, like what five, six, six, eight, six, seven, six, nine? No, they're all two pairs. I'm not turning that into a bluff. Or, um, yeah, I mean, there's just so few hands that I can be bluffing with here. Like, king 10? That I want to get 6x or 5x to fold? I don't know. So he shouldn't really be calling here Like I don't think I should be bluffing here. Uh, go and head back half part, and he snap calls. I'm not sure what he had there. Oh, he had king 9, right, okay, so... Yeah, interesting to note that he's checking back with second pair. Um, if he does that, I don't necessarily hate that. 
doesn't it stops him from getting in hard spots on if I check raise and he doesn't know what to do. That being said though on that turn he needs to be betting. You can just get value from so much in its protection, it's uh but that's pretty mandatory. Check how we're doing for time. Uh, this handle on the right is really interesting. Um, when I played it in game, I actually thought I played it really well and was kind of happy and didn't think it was much to talk about. And then reviewing later, uh, I realised that. I actually made at least one if not two mistakes in this hand um, so his fold versus C bet on the flop is 19 so that's really low uh, and he's raising 50% his turn fold is 50% so when you C bet this board you kind of have to think that he's going to be calling you pretty light he's also 3 betting 30% which means that I don't think he ever has an ace in his range uh, for all intents and purposes anyway I mean, yeah I mean he's never really got any a6 in this range so when this turn comes I think his range is quads which you know none ever has quads so we can rule that out just right there uh, a6 which again he can't uh, he can't have so like it's king x quads or some sort of weird float like a 6 8 that he's just decided to call reverse float with and uh, bet the river and against that range, even though we're never getting quads to fold, and I don't think we're getting king high to fold, I don't think if we bet here we should be trying to fold out king high, I think that's... Um, against a guy like this, I don't think we'll be getting many folds. I think he's going to see that he has the the nut kicker to trips uh, and an ace, and he's not going to want to go anywhere. So... And if we bet the turn, I mean, we could, but then we'd have to barrel the river, and I don't want to do that without uh, without strong reads. I mean, I'd feel pretty kind of bad about that. But what we can do is that because his call of C bet is so low, I think we can bet the turn here quite small, and we can get all his floats to fold and get a really good price for our bluff. I think if you bet 80 here, 910 is just going to snap fold, um, and that has to work, what, 18 to 120 so yeah a really small percent of the time um like what is it 20 percent uh and yeah i mean i just think that's the best way to play this hand we already know he's folding loads on the turn so we've got all the stats sort of back up the idea um at the time though i saw that he called an ace to come um and i just don't think i thought about this hand very well so I decided to check, which is a pretty easy mistake to make in game, but uh, definitely should be firing out a small bet here, just because it's going to get folds from so much. And also, you know, our two and four are pretty much always live, or live the vast majority of the time. So even if he does have king x and call, we're still like 12% to win or something, which is just takes down the percent that the bluff needs to work. And then he leaves out 120, and you've got to ask, like, what's he betting 120 with here on the river? Like, quads, yeah, I suppose so, but I mean, even then I should be betting the ace on the turn and or the river. So, if he's betting quads, he's trying to get value off a king high or a pair of sixes. Uh, so, I think his range at the river is like pretty much quads maybe king six uh some slow played pocket pairs like queens or something and then a lot of floats which don't really know what to do and against that range again there's 330 in the pot we can min raise and fold out all his junk and uh, the, the thing I don't like about raising here is that if you think that raising here is good because uh, because he's got so much air in his range then that just makes the turn barrel even better so um, but yeah I mean he's really not repping that much here I mean 
you kind of never know with a a player you don't have that much history with. I mean, I know I've got 230 hands on him, but I don't think I've played him that much recently. Uh, so he could just like bet call King High or something, or you know, there's a certain amount of uh, information that we don't have, but definitely betting the turn here is good. Um, and yeah, so I think I made a bit of a hash of that hand, but it's a live and learn. Okay, we'll uh, do a couple more hands and then we'll call it a video. So on the left, uh, the villain min bets. If you remember from the start of the video, this was the guy who defended 7-2 and uh, min bet, min bet, min bet and then called our raise on the river when we hit the king. Uh, I think it was a 7-5-5 board. 7-5-5-10 king. So here I kind of assume that he's got some showdown value, either that or a weak draw. Um, so you could make an argument for raising. That being said though, I've kind of got the board locked down pretty strong. And uh, yeah, I mean, if he has an 8 or a 6, by the time we get to the turn, there's only like one, one and a third like pot size bets left. One and a half. And um, yeah, I, I don't think we need to raise here. I expect him to, like, if he if he's the kind of player that min bet min bet min bets even if we call the turn here then that just sets up like a pot size bet on the river and if he has an eight i don't expect him to fold um now the turn card comes and he donk bets into me um his range here i think like with the leading we saw before he does it with marginal showdown values the ace comes so i assume that he's got some sort of a6 like eight uh, x like eight seven uh eight nine uh one of those hands and uh i think we see that yep yeah, he is eight ten which is kind of top of his range but it's a pretty bad play i mean i'm folding six i'm pretty confident i'm folding all six x's there um so the only thing he's getting value off is a worse eight x which i'd be betting the turn anyway so he's better off check raising and uh, trying to get value from my floats um, because there he's just negative free rolling himself so there's a hand over here um, I think it's kind of close. I think most players would default to checking here. I definitely think there's nothing wrong with that. I kind of felt the way it was going though, he's been so aggressive in the match that if he had a strong hand he'd be raising a lot. I didn't really think he'd be limb trapping the way dynamic had been going. Uh, going. So I decided that uh, the 60 in the pot, I'm just going to throw in the whole lot and see if I can, can't get a fold. I expect him, the way game flow has been going, I think he's folding there, maybe 70% of the time. And I think we've got two live cards most of the time when he calls, so it's not a bad spot. Okay, well, uh, I think we're going to call that a video for now. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the comment section, and I'll try and get back to you. And. Uh, yeah, feel free to leave any criticism and advice or uh, requests what kind of videos you want in the future. I'm happy to uh, take on your opinions and see if we can get a better video for next time. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Daniel Heskett for uh, HeadsUpSNG.com. Take care. Bye.